Hey guys, and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included, Clay's amazing space colony management simulator extraordinaire. For the past 300 cycles, we have guided this civilization into greater and greater heights of technology, finally getting ready to make our way into space. On the way, we have faced water problems, we have faced oxygen problems, food and even germ issues. But all of these we have overcome in some sort of idea of moving forward into the future. As is almost always the case, we're going to spend the first couple of minutes going around and checking out the things that we did last time, doing any maintenance that needs to happen. And we're also going to start sending our research down towards the celestial detection area so we can start finding out what's going on in the sky, or as we call it, space, uh, and working everybody's skills towards that. Now, last time I made this slime farm, you guys may remember this, I was also thinking that maybe we can re kajigger the space inside it so we can get a little bit more of an efficient use of that area in there. Travaldo, our day. Uh, sacrifice down on the left there turns out a bit of a needless sacrifice and in my defense this is because the wikipedia was very vague about whether this would actually work or not if you went and looked into the outhouse it would tell you that the outhouse would summon the morb but if you went and looked into the morb actual file itself it will tell you that it would arise from a dead body now unfortunately it turns out that this has actually been a change this is something that the developers decided that they did not want happening in their game people didn't like the idea of trading duplicate life for extra oxygen so they removed that now i think this is actually a bit of a shame I mean, who are they to tell me what type of uh, uh, overseer I'm allowed to be? Sorry, I was trying to avoid the word dictator there. We have a little bit of a problem with our power generation down below. We are backing up with carbon dioxide. Now, this was all just like a gas flow issue. I just needed to figure out exactly where the pipes were running. Did a small bit of a rearrangement, and that should get everything flowing well. Still, the skill points are coming thick and fast, and we're just kind of having to put them out there, hoping that the morale will hold Height. You can see there that I have managed to fix one issue, but not fix one of the others. We've got all the carbon dioxide flowing from the generators out and being processed, so that means that the power does flow, but we have also the issue that the, the carbon dioxide is not flowing up to the mushrooms. Not the biggest problem in the world, but it is a problem that I need to be aware of. Okay, so with Travaldo there, what we're going to have to do is try and figure out new ways of making polluted oxygen. And I think the first thing we're going to do is try and put down an outhouse in that area. It's about time that it was just something that happened uh, and, and that's how we we get more morbs in uh, the other thing i want to do i want to move the farms i've been saying for a little time now that we're just going to slowly be pushing the farms upwards as we move through uh, the colony as we start to expand more and more and take over more resources uh, probably would be an idea to make a bigger farm and carry on expanding like that but we've already got actually more food than we can deal with with our 14 duplicates and if we move the farm up maybe we could make some more bedrooms and stuff like that okay one of the other problems we've got is we are running out of water as is always the case we always seem to be like right on the verge of completely running out of water uh, and this means that we can't do our high level science because the uh, big computer science machine thing uh, it needs it needs water to be able to function and uh, you know that's 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 a thing we're working on all right i'm going to put an outhouse down in the slime farm so that we can induce more morbs into the area because that's that's exactly what we want that was the entire point we're also going to put up a uh, a monument at some point for Travaldo. we're going to put it in the slime farm it's going to be the the travaldo memorial slime farm it, it kind of has to be the thing all right i was going around and checking my storage compactors here to make sure that we could put away things that we wanted to put away uh, i'm also looking at this chlorine vent we've had that in there for so long and i'm just not sure what i want to do with it like obviously maybe getting some sort of ore scrubber would be uh, an ideal situation at some point especially as we have all this slime and slime lung kicking around at the moment uh, but i i would also like to do i don't know something else what is the highest temperature we can like raise some chlorine to right i don't know but one thing i do know is that we are having trouble with our oxygen down below at the main airlock oh look that was that was a nice little dig out oh, i was having water issues there and i was like you know what i'm just gonna dump it all in that cave over there and we will deal with it at some point yeah but down at the main airlock we are running out of oxygen there is a problem with the atmosphere suits it turns out too many people are using the atmosphere suits and we do not have the oxygen production to keep up with that it's not the end of the world but it is definitely something to keep an eye on and maybe if we can build a secondary oxygen system right in this little gap here that i am now looking at the design is essentially exactly the same as the one right next door we're going to try and compactify down a little bit you can see that on the one on the right the electrolyzers have like a ladder next to them 
What wasted space is that? Let's get rid of that. We're going to put the, like, a couple of pumps down below. Uh, we're going to try and make this place look absolutely a spiffing if we can. Now that I've gone and done that, uh, I'm now there being like, where are we going to put the, the atmospheric detector maybe i made a little bit of a mistake with that but we can go through and fix this it's one of the wonderful things about all these tile based games that almost everything is fixable at any point that you want to now you can see that we've got a lot of a uh, lot of jobs going on around there and i put a lot of them at level nine because i want the jobs that are in front of me to be the ones that get worked on it's very nice having jobs off all in the other directions getting worked on but the ones that are in front of my camera they are pretty much the ones that i want to concentrate on so i made a little bit of a mistake of completely boxing everything in and my jukins couldn't get up to the uh, the top vent to uh, pump that through. Now, another little problem with the power down below. I noticed that the uh, oxygenator up top wasn't running because it had a lack of power. And somehow it was because this had kind of worked its way into a weird loop. And the fact that the mushroom vent was overpressurized was causing the whole system to back up and not allow the carbon dioxide to be dealt with in another way. Uh, I figured out this is because there was a, a, a branch that needed to be uh, decided upon at some point so if i get rid of that branch and then make that sort of the end point where the goes up to the mushrooms and then have the carbon dioxide processing happen online in be uh, between that then that makes it so it's all flowing in one direction and gets processed when it uh, backs up far enough which which is working brilliantly uh, one of the problems that i've got is my water is starting to fill up with a little bit of slime lung and i am not about that so we're going to turn off the um oxygenator not the oxygenator sorry the uh, algae slime distiller that's the one slime distiller um <clears throat> another thing that i'm going to do is expand the top hot water tank you saw me uh line up some deconstruction orders there and we're going to make sure that it uh, opens up to an area the same as the one underneath it because uh, you know we're getting a bigger place we're running through a lot more water we need more water storage uh it's it's just kind of part of the upgrade that we need to happen here now i spend a, a, a an embarrassing amount of time trying to figure out why this large power um, converter that I put down the bottom there isn't connected to the power network but of course it is connected to the power network I've just not connected its output up to anything that's what that battery symbol means not the other way around I, yeah as I say an embarrassing amount of time trying to figure that out but I, I did eventually figure it out and a few wire bridges later we've got a power system in place but you can see here the problem that we have uh, all the different oxygens that are being consumed are just going all over the place and we do not have enough to top up all the atmospheric suits so this one that we are building here i'm going to start off just trying to pump it into the same line if it turns out that that's not actually like enough volume inside the uh, the pipe i will end up taking it up and just sending it straight to the atmospheric suits because that just seems like a smart choice if you ask me but if there is one thing that being a youtuber has taught me is that you can feel really confident about your smart choices and then when you come to watch them later you're like actually that that wasn't the smartest choice and it makes me feel really bad about younger me who, who didn't quite understand what was going on because he only ever lived in his like experience and didn't didn't try and look at it from another point of view oh i must have been insufferable so my recommendation to you dear viewer if you think you are a better game player than me Go and record something and then tell, come back to me and tell me how you feel after that. Oh, it's it's an eye-opening experience. I started this because I was watching people and I was like, oh, these guys are rubbish at games. I can do better than that. No, no, it turns out you just have a filter bubble on the go. So anyway, these duplicates have been working on the top tunnel for a little bit of time now. And you can see that it's actually been uh, tiled off top and bottom. This is to try and make sure no slime lung gets out and about. But one thing that we were literally just observing, and I'm not sure if you, dear viewer, actually noticed it, is that people are leaving... The the atmosphere the airlock on the left hand side and then going up over the corridor at the very top and coming back down the other side now this this is no bueno this is not the way that i want my uh, my culture to be running so what we're going to try and do is put a door up at the top corridor to uh, divide the base up and we're even going to tell people that they're not allowed to go either way uh, through that now i have been noticing for a little bit of time now that we have been running out of power no matter how much we try and keep ahead of it these three gas geysers which used to be so much power that we were overwhelmed by the sheer concept of three gas geysers is actually 
not as much as the base needs anymore. So it's time for us to start thinking about how else we can provide power. And as a good advanced civilization is wont to do, we're going to use petroleum. I really see no way of this backfiring on me in any way, shape or form if I spend my entire uh, like rest of my time on this asteroid burning petroleum for power. I mean, what, what could possibly go wrong there? I was just about to spend a little bit of time making sarcastic declarations about how, you know, the environment will be fine and stuff like that. But then I stopped to think about the environment that we actually have inside this asteroid. And fair enough, we have some plants. But does anyone else think it's a little bit weird that there's no, like, vines, no trees, no, no nothing like that? You would expect, like, the mushrooms, like the fungal spores, to have spread their way out sort of mycelium style and maybe taken over an entire, entire biome. Dear Clay, I would like a mushroom biome. I think this is something that is very, very themeful, something that, like, really fits the living on an asteroid style. Yeah, if we've got slime and organic material, where is the mushrooms that are processing that down into other stuff? You, you know, you know that would happen. Like there are fully formed critters running around on this, on this rock. You know, the the drax, the uh, the morb, the, the the pufflings and stuff like that. Where, where's the biodegraders? That's what I'm asking. And if we're gonna be breaking into philosophy, who put the original primal goo in the printer? Who made the printer? Ah, oh, this is very confusing. I, I'm not quite sure what's going on with the actual makeup of this place. All right, so we're putting in the doors as previously discussed, and we're, we're kind of just waiting for everything to get moved around. Now, what are the side effects we've got of people going from, from one airlock to the other, essentially, going up and around the entire thing? Is we're ending up with a lot of um, atmosphere suits in the wrong place. Uh, and this, this this kind of annoys me as the overseer that I am. I'm kind of like, guys, guys, it's very obvious where the things need to go. Yet you still just keep dumping it down the end of your beds and you're not tidying up. And if you're living under my roof, I really want you to start, like pulling your way around if you can. Tommy is the only guy that does any cleaning. You guys are all just out there ripping stuff down, tracking your muddy boots everywhere. Sorry, I seem to have gone to a bit of another rant here. I tell you what, should we talk about the uh, oil and petroleum production down below? Now, obviously, we've been making plastic for a little bit of time now, so I figure that the the conversion, or at least the uh, the dealing of the waste products with the oil to petroleum conversions, have actually been dealt with. I, I can just hook up the pipes to the systems that we've already got in place, and everyone's happy, right? I, I'm hoping that's the way it's going to be. It does mean that we need to do a little bit of rearrangement. There's a few things that need to be moved around, and we're starting to get to the situation now where the uh, the piping infrastructure in the corridor out the on the left there. Is it's actually about three pipes wide. Now, I, I don't know if you've noticed that the uh, the water pipes, the, the jumpy things, can only go over one actual pipe. So trying to actually work around all of that stuff is a bit more of an issue than I thought it would be. But honestly, that is the way that almost every build has ever come out to, so I, I don't know why I'm that surprised about it. What I'm going to do to try and solve it is to put a, a jump, a wire bridge, a, not a wire bridge, sorry, a liquid bridge on one of the pipes that are going up, and then get one of the pipes coming across to also jump across one of the other ones, and hopefully we're going to have like the interaction of the two jumps working in such a way as to work around, and that should, that should work out pretty well for us. The other thing that I'm wondering about is like the uh, out Output from the petroleum generator over there. I know that we're going to have to be dealing with things like carbon dioxide, so I've immediately hooked up the carbon dioxide scrubber there, but I'm not sure what else it's going to be outputting. So we'll put a tile up just to make sure that there is no excess spillage that we have to worry about. The other thing that I am actually worried about, and I'm not sure if there's any way to uh, to change this, is the oil refineries need to have a duplicate to, to operate. A, a duplicate needs to come down, he interacts with it, he spins that wheel around and in a little bit of uh, petroleum gets produced or a little bit of oil gets refined. I don't know which way round you want to talk about it, but that's that's what's going on. And I don't know if there's a way of removing that step. Is there a way of making automatic petroleum? I think there is actually. Now that I've uh, spoken about it, I believe all you need to do is add heat. You don't actually need to have a uh, an oil refinery. You just warm oil up to a specific temperature, at which point it turns into petroleum. Because as we all know, that, that's how it works in the real world, right? I mean, that, it's pretty close. It's pretty close now that I stopped to actually think about it. You heat it up and then you've got to fractionally distill it. But, you know, whatever. So now that I stopped to think about it, you know, if you heat up the petroleum, it turns into natural gas, and that natural gas will turn into sour gas if it goes too far. So I think actually some sort of like cracking column could be a thing in this game if we just keep pouring more 
oil in the top. Uh, it will get hot at the bottom and then the different fractions, the different uh, different outputs that we want will come out at different heights depending on how hot it gets, right? That, that might be a thing we have to figure out there. So we were talking about the amount of perth plastic that I had made and I was like, you know what? I think it's actually time that we started putting some uh, movement enhancers inside the actual base itself because it's all nice and wonderful having people moving around outside the base nice and fast but with like the base is our base the base is the area that we want people to be doing as efficiently as possible so it turns out that I actually gave uh, an order that at my entire stock of plastic I didn't think it was going to but that that's it that's how much plastic I actually managed to make during the entire course of our playthrough which is it's kind of good and also kind of bad uh, we got the same situation where we're like well okay fair enough but also I don't use that much plastic so so whatever uh, once again watching the people go up and over the top as it turns out trying to deliver ice this time uh, and also put these uh, thermal uh, switch plates thermal switch plates yes that's what they're called uh, across in the cold water tank here I've noticed that it's much more hot on the right hand side than it is on the left which I knew was going to happen because we got hot water coming in on the right, cold water leaving on the left, and cold cooling elements all underneath. Um, but I was wondering if I put the, the thermal switch plate on a little bit, maybe maybe we could um, accelerate that cooling process, and that would be pretty good. I'm a little bit worried about the fact that people keep having to disinfect inside my cold water tank. Uh, I, I was really thinking that this would be a sterile area, uh, and I'm more than a little bit disappointed that it's not. Okay, we're going around and checking my gold amalgam status here. here. Uh, you will notice that I do that quite often. Uh, this is because people are not doing the deliveries that I want them to do, and it's taking quite a long time for them to get around there. Now, I'm not entirely sure what is causing this. Obviously, it is some sort of, like, priority conflict, but I've gone around, I've turned down like, the majority of my high-level ones, apart from the ones that I'm, like, looking at at the time. Uh, I've turned down all my high-level priorities to, like, a 7 or something like that. Maybe even lower 6 or something. Um, trying to uh, push them in the right area but you know as always duplicates also have their own like internal wants uh, the, the builders will build the diggers will dig uh, and such forth though we do have a little bit of a problem where I have dropped a little bit of polluted water into the cold water tank this is bad uh, it's particularly bad from the fact that there's so much there that I can't just mop it uh, so I think my plan is actually going to be send it to the normal tank and mop it in there uh, which Probably not actually the best plan, but we're, we're going to do that anyway. We're going we're to try and split it up using the power of the pump and the pipes uh, and see if we can't get Tommy or whoever the actual uh, plumber is to come along. Zetek doing a hand mop in the hot, in the hot oil. Uh, I don't know whether he actually enjoys that or not. His face kind of told me he didn't, but it is clearing that way out so we can start looking at that major oil pocket underneath. And then once that, once that major oil pocket has gone, which I have a feeling given the fact that we are scaling up our oil use, uh, here that that's gonna be quite quick but once all that's gone we've actually got a geyser underneath for oil we're gonna have troubles keeping the temperature down always having troubles keeping the temperature down down in the lower areas but I've got a feeling we will we'll be okay like merely from distance you know it's hot all the way down there relatively cool in the base. Starting to get a little bit worried about their skill system here. Most of the duplicates are doing fine, but we've got people like uh, Hollywood and ZTech. Major, majorly, it's just the uh, the Patreons who have been with us for the longest time. They're starting to get so many skills together now that the morale that they require is not being met by the base, or at least we're getting up to that line. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it on on the skill line. If I click the wrong skills, I get a little exclamation mark telling me that that's too many too many points for the amount of morale that we have. So uh, we got we got to watch out for that. We have got to watch out. But it should be fine. We can like go around. We can put some paintings up. We can be careful about what skills we're giving people. Maybe we could rearrange people to make sure that, that if they're like doing the dangerous jobs outside all the time, we bring them in every now and then so they're not like suffering so much from the morale. This this is kind of the stuff that I'm hoping for. Okay, so I've got a little bit fed up of having to wait for everything to get delivered. So I put down uh, the uh, priority here on the generator. I want super high priority if I can. The problem is, for some reason, even though it is a red alert priority and everyone should be working at it, no, everybody's going around doing other jobs. Now, I assume that one of the duplicates is, like, super on it. 
And indeed, Shrouticus is the man who is on it. But that, that just took forever, you know? Speaking of taking it forever, oh, Shrouticus, you, you are a very good worker. You go along and you do the building. But unfortunately, you do not love to do the building. Therefore, it takes like a normal amount of time, which is a little disappointing because we've given the jobs mostly to people who do it in half the time. So when we finally run into someone who's doing it in a normal amount of time, it feels like it is taking forever. As you can see, Shrouticus here is actually starting to run out of oxygen in his atmosphere suit before he builds the generator. Now, I believe, if I remember correctly, I was the guy who was playing this, so I can cast my mind back in time and uh, will remind me what's actually happening here. But Shroudkus is just looking very, very close to uh, to suffocating. Thankfully, he won't, but oh, it's so close. Uh, of course, with it being red alert, he is going to just carry on through the night. Uh, I'm fine with this, especially as the fact that you can now see the yellow bar coming out from behind the exclamation marks. And if you do a black bar to blue bar comparison, you've got a feeling that the, uh, the build is going to get done before Travicus suffocates. Oh, beautiful. Now, he's got to make his way to the toilet. He literally, everything was on hold for him to be able to go and do that build. So now, there, there. Travicus, good, good man. Go and get a night's sleep. Uh, that's what I would like. I don't think that night's sleep is actually going to happen right now because for some reason, duplicates don't like sleeping at night, in the daytime, sorry. Uh, I'm not quite sure what's going on with that. All right, at this point, I realise... Carbon dioxide doesn't come out of a pipe. What are you doing? Uh, I've got to put the petroleum into the pipe. Okay, so once, once I've realised what was going on there, that was a, that was a full like pause there for a couple of minutes. I was like, oh, what have I, what have I even done here? Like, where am I, how how stupid can you be? Uh, unfortunately, that's that's just the way things go sometimes. So we're gonna try and move everything around and move the door up, particularly because you know when producing carbon dioxide, if we have a door down low and every time the door opens, the carbon dioxide will come wafting out. So if we put it up a bit at least the lip will hold the carbon dioxide behind we're going to put some sort of water pipe in there as well sorry a liquid pipe uh, pump in there as well to uh, to get rid of any uh, effluence that comes off the top of the machine because you never know uh, in fact there's, there's, it's not you never know if you read the read the description it tells you stuff comes off so you've got to be prepared for that one of the things that I'm not sure is either the greatest or the worst part of this game is all the external stuff you've got to slap down to make sure that machines run. You can see that the uh, the generator is running right now, uh, but unfortunately the 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 infrastructure around it was not put in place. So we've got like polluted water just kind of spill out on the floor beyond what it needed to be. We've got nothing dealing with the carbon dioxide yet. There isn't a pump built, but the power is being produced, and I, we really needed that power being produced because it was choking our oxygen production because there was no power being produced. If there's no power, there's no power to electrolyze. If there's no electrolyzing, there's no oxygen. Oh, it, was just, it was a horrible, nasty feedback loop. Um, in fact, if you were paying very close attention throughout this episode, you would see that every now and then whilst going past the only manual generator in the, in the base, the one next to the... Uh, natural gas guys are up top the very first one we did uh, even though it is on super low priority and only deal with me when the ba battery is empty every now and then um shadow or uh, sir steve or someone would just end up being on there all day every day uh, it, it was all right you know it wasn't the end of the world it could have been a lot better though uh, so i'm trying to clear up the uh, polluted water from the carbon dioxide scrubber there because the last thing we need is that carbon dioxide scrubber being classed as um, as flooded because if it was flooded it wouldn't clear, clear the carbon dioxide if it doesn't clear the carbon dioxide I'm almost certain the generator will overpressurize and if the generator overpressurizes we haven't got any power and we're still still stuck where we were in the first place so the pump hadn't uh, fired up to get rid of the polluted water in the cold water tank so I thought the thing I would do is replace the tile underneath it and hope that water drops out uh, this is a technique I have used in the past so we're going to try and make that work for us again uh, thankfully most things below that cold water tank other than the actual weeds water themselves it's just kind of like scrap area so it's not really anything we have to worry about so right now you can see my major problem with this setup is the fact that you know all the duplicates need to come down and uh, crank it by hand uh it is a problem especially when i want that oxygen dealt with if we could please that's literally what my entire plan was for this episode but so much stuff had to be dealt with around it so that it actually appears that this episode was all about power crazy right one indirect problem that i have got that i'm a, a little bit worried about you can see that all the debris on the floor in this 
what is a hot area is being said to be uh, swept up. I'm a little bit worried that when we pick that up and move it into our base, into the storage compactor, we're actually going to end up moving a whole bunch of heat with it. I'm not sure if that is a super valid concern or something we, we only really need to like a little bit be worried about. I have a feeling it is going to be something we do need to worry about, but I, I don't think it's going to be uh, the end of the world if a few things get moved around. So you can see that the polluted water has been moved out of the cold water tank. Now, I don't know whether it got dropped on the floor or thrown into my main water tank. I do know some of it ended up in the main water tank, but at the same time, you can see there is polluted water underneath the weasel. Water. So maybe actually what happened is it got split down into two areas and sent into two different directions. That would be uh, great. The majority of the infrastructure for the petroleum generator has been put down now, and that's looking pretty good, but I'm a little worried about my bristle blossoms not actually having uh, everything they need to grow. Bristle blossoms are a pretty good food source and also make people feel good when they can smell the flowers. But I think we are getting very close to being able to wrap this up. There's a few few oddities that I want to have a look at. If you can see here, there's like water just being turned into snow and back again because of the temperature differences between when polluted uh, polluted water and normal water freeze. So the uh, normal water is like melting in the air, but the actual polluted water is too cold for it to exist as water in. So it like turns back into snow, which point is it gets thrown up. But when it gets thrown up, it's back in the air and it gets turned back into water. Yeah, it's crazy. A nice little, nice little system. Now, I wonder whether we could actually use that as some sort of uh, clock. Maybe uh, so have a have a like an item detector or something like that, or maybe some sort of like hydro sensor that turns on and off as it as it gets turned in and out out of. Uh, snow. Yeah, that, that would be very interesting. I'm not sure if that's a thing we can leverage or not, but uh, yeah, we're getting very close to building all the things that we want to do. You can see that the power is turning over and actually is powering its own uh, auxiliary systems there, so that's working out pretty well. We are having a little bit of problems with things like pipes on the top left of that situation being built there, but that's that's no big worry. And one thing that I'm actually going to do now is start restricting the number of people that can actually leave out of the left-hand airlock, because we don't need any everyone coming out here like Tommy doesn't need to come out here Tommy is a cleaner only he doesn't need to be in this horrific area but also we seem to be pumping some weird materials into some weird places but with that I'm going to say thank you very much for joining for this adventure ladies and gentlemen I will see you next time where hopefully we'll have the water to be able to research the space science and then we're going to put like a silo in on the left there you can see a great big space where things need to be but I will see you then when we're going to do that bye